uh, some market fundamentals as well. Nirav Asher from Latin Manohar Lal, Manohar Lal Group is joining us now to discuss that. Uh, uh, Nirav, uh, good morning. Thank you so much for joining in. Well, what is the market mood right now? Because we do see those higher levels, but we have been coming off from there. Um, uh, what is the current valuation picture looking like and uh, some of the sectors that you are bullish on now? Yeah, good morning and thank you for having me on your show. Uh, starting off with the markets, I think the markets have been under some amount of pressure. Uh, yesterday, uh, particularly, we've seen uh, the China-related data uh, has unsettled the markets. Uh, we've seen a lot of vulnerability of uh, the Chinese data. We've, we've heard news about the slowdown in the Chinese real estate market. Then they, This has spread over to the metals then to the oil and gas. And yesterday, the BMW has also cut their guidance, uh, citing a muted Chinese demand. So I think uh, a lot of areas where this uh, this news is spreading around and uh, the fears of a global slowdown uh, are uh, looking uh, quite authentic. And uh, we have uh, the uh, Brent crew, which has uh, gone below the $75 mark, and now it's even gone below the $70 a mark, just to recover a bit. But I think uh, from this perspective, uh, the markets have been quite nervous. In yesterday's uh, trade uh, post-afternoon uh, session, we did see uh, correction in the large-cap stocks like uh, Reliance, uh, LNT, Tata Motors, SBI, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra. So I think uh, at this point of time, the saving grace for the market uh, is uh, the golden troika, that is uh, the FMCG sector, the pharma and IT. Uh, these sectors have shown a lot of resilience and uh, at this point of time also they continue to do quite well in the market, especially the pharma space has been doing quite well. IT has been holding out quite well in the market. So FMCG, pharma and IT. Uh, so Neera, you're positioning your portfolio for a global recession. Is that why you've got a completely defensive tilt? And say you've got 100 rupees of a portfolio, how much of it would be in these three sectors? I think at this point of time, the, uh, the rest of the sectors are looking uh, stretched uh, in terms of uh, valuations. I think auto is also reeling under some amount of pressure. Uh, today, we did get some uh, uh, some positive news. Uh, but I think uh, the rally has been sold into and uh, uh, banks have not been participating in the rally. So I think uh, it would be fair to give uh, an allocation of around 20-20% to each of the, uh, the three uh, sectors which we just spoke about. Hmm. Uh, Nina, you also have some of the stocks that you like from the uh, large cap space. You know, large caps did see an, imp an improvement in inflows in the month of August as well as per the mutual fund data. Take us through that. LNT is one of it. Uh, the big capex cycle. We've been talking about a lot of changes coming by in the sector as well. What is it that you like about LNT? Uh, as far as Larson Tupro is concerned, I think uh, uh, they have been a big beneficiary of overseas orders. Uh, uh, they have around 40% of their order book, which comes in from uh, the international orders. And uh, Middle East accounts for a big chunk of these orders. Uh, one important factor about the overseas orders is that uh, the, uh, the working capital terms uh, in these uh, orders are quite favorable as compared to the domestic peers. So uh, going forward, as the execution picks up, uh, I think uh, working capital issue is, an, uh, is, a, is a matter which has to be handled very sensitively by the infrastructure companies. So that is one positive. At the same time, uh, LNT is now uh, focusing on being asset light. So that is another positive for the company. The third important thing is that they have a, a very strong order book even in the domestic markets. And plus, uh, the other areas where LNT has been concentrating, especially the IT business, the real estate business, um, those have been doing quite well. And uh, uh, apart from this, of course, the financing business, LNT finance has also been doing quite well. So I think all these things augur quite well uh, for LNT. There is a lot of uh, hidden embedded value which is there. Uh, which can be unlocked going forward. Uh, Nira, one would assume that LNT uh, performs poorly when crude prices decline given their dependence on Middle East. The wealth of Middle East comes down with the decline in crude prices. Uh, so, um, you know, but you're saying that it's actually a positive for uh, an LNT. Historically, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yesterday we did see some correction. Uh, we did see some pressure uh, on LNT. 
But MMT has been very flexible as far as uh, bagging orders is concerned. Whenever uh, the uh, the crude oil is doing quite well, they managed to procure a lot of orders uh, from the Middle East region. And uh, in other times when the domestic market is doing quite well, they do, do participate well in the domestic market as well. So um, if one were to look at the overall uh, performance of the infrastructure sector, LNT has actually reduced their guidance also. They have reduced the guidance for the next year. But this is taking into account the fact that the infrastructure business is essentially a low margin business. So that, that is a reality check for this particular business. And that is why they are concentrating on other areas like information technology or uh, the real estate business and the financing business, etc. So I think these, these businesses will add more value to LNT going forward. Okay. All right, Nirav, thank you so much for joining in today with your market uh, fundamentals and the outlook going forward as well. That's the word coming in on markets, but it's time for a short break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Karthik Padmanabhan of Zinov to discuss India's global capability centers landscape. <laughs>